democratization is the transition to a more democratic political regime. It may be the transition from an authoritarian regime to a full democracy, a transition from an authoritarian political system to a semi-democracy or transition from a semi-authoritarian political system to a democratic political system. The outcome may be consolidated or democratization may face frequent reversals. Different patterns of democratization are often used to explain other political phenomena, such as whether a country goes to a war or whether its economy grows. Democratization itself is influenced by various factors, including economic development, history, and civil society. The ideal result from democratization is to ensure that the people have the right to vote and have a voice in their political system. Causes of democratization there is considerable debate about the factors which affect or ultimately limit democratization. A great many things, including economics, culture, and history, have been cited as impacting on the process. Some of the more frequently mentioned factors are, wealth. A higher GDP capita correlates with democracy and while some claim the wealthiest democracies have never been observed to fall into authoritarianism, the rise of Hitler and the Nazis in Weimar Germany would be an obvious counterexample that would render the claim a truism. There is also the general observation that democracy was very rare before the Industrial Revolution. Empirical research thus lead many to believe that economic development either increases chances for a transition to democracy, or helps newly established democracies consolidate. One study finds that economic development prompts democratization but only in the medium run. This is because development may entrench the incumbent leader but make it more difficult for him to deliver the state to a son or trusted aide when he exits. However, the debate about whether democracy is a consequence of wealth, a cause of it, or both processes are unrelated, is far from conclusion. Another study suggests that economic development depends on the political stability of a country to promote democracy. Social equality Asimoglu and Robinson argued that the relationship between social equality and democratic transition is complicated, people have less incentive to revolt in an egalitarian society, so the likelihood of democratization is lower. In a highly unequal society, the redistribution of wealth and power in a democracy would be so harmful to elites that these would do everything to prevent democratization. Democratization is more likely to emerge somewhere in the middle, in the countries, whose elites offer concessions because they consider the threat of a revolution credible and the cost of the concessions is not too high. This expectation is in line with the empirical research showing that democracy is more stable in egalitarian societies. Culture it is claimed by some that certain cultures are simply more conductive to democratic values than others. This view is likely to be ethnocentric. Typically, it is Western culture which is cited as best suited to democracy, with other cultures portrayed as containing values which make democracy difficult or undesirable. This argument is sometimes used by undemocratic regimes to justify their failure to implement democratic reforms. Today, however, there are many non-Western democracies. Examples include, India, Japan, Indonesia, Namibia, Botswana, Taiwan, and South Korea. Research finds that Western-educated leaders significantly and substantively improve a counter Euro unregistered trademark s democratization prospects. Foreign intervention. Democracies have often been imposed by military intervention for example in Japan and Germany after WWII. In other cases, decolonization sometimes facilitated the establishment of democracies that were soon replaced by authoritarian regimes. For example, in the United States South after the Civil War, former slaves were disenfranchised by Jim Crow laws after the Reconstruction era of the United States. After many decades, U.S. democracy was re-established by civic associations and an outside military. Education It has long been theorized that education promotes stable and democratic societies. Research shows that education leads to greater political tolerance, increases the likelihood of political participation and reduces inequality. One study finds that increases in levels of education improve levels of democracy and that the democratizing effect of education is more intense in poor countries. Transitions, 
democracy development has often been slow, violent, and marked by frequent reversals. Equals historical cases equals, in Great Britain, the English Civil War was fought between the King and an oligarchic but elected Parliament. The Protectorate and the English Restoration restored more autocratic rule. The Glorious Revolution in 1688 established a strong Parliament that passed the Bill of Rights 1689, which is still in effect. It codified certain rights and liberties for individuals and set out the requirement for regular parliaments, free elections, rules for freedom of speech in Parliament and limited the power of the monarch, ensuring that, unlike much of the rest of Europe, royal absolutism would not prevail. Only with the representation of the People Act 1884 did a majority of the males get the vote. The American Revolution created the United States. In many fields, it was a success ideologically in the sense that a relatively true republic was established that never had a single dictator, but voting rights were initially restricted to white male property owners. Slavery was only abolished with the American Civil War and the civil rights given to African Americans became achieved in the 1960s. The French Revolution briefly allowed a wide franchise. The French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars lasted for more than 20 years. The French Directory was more oligarchic. The First French Empire and the Bourbon Restoration restored more autocratic rule. The Second French Republic had universal male suffrage but was followed by the Second French Empire. The Franco-Prussian War resulted in the French Third Republic. The German Empire was created in 1871. It was followed by the Weimar Republic after World War I. Nazi Germany restored autocratic rule before the defeat in World War II. The Kingdom of Italy, after the unification of Italy in 1861, was a constitutional monarchy with the king having considerable powers. Italian fascism created a dictatorship after the World War I. World War II resulted in the Italian Republic. The Meiji period, after 1868, started the modernization of Japan. Limited democratic reforms were introduced. The Tasha period saw more reforms. The beginning of the Shawa period reversed this until the end of the World War II. Equals since 1972 equals, according to a study by Freedom House, in 67 countries where dictatorships have fallen since 1972, nonviolent civic resistance was a strong influence over 70% of the time. In these transitions, changes were catalyzed not through foreign invasion, and only rarely through armed revolt or voluntary elite driven reforms, but overwhelmingly by democratic civil society organizations utilizing nonviolent action and other forms of civil resistance, such as strikes, boycotts, civil disobedience, and mass protests. Indicators of democratization One influential survey in democratization is that of Freedom House which arose during the Cold War. The Freedom House, today an institution and a think tank, stands as one of the most comprehensive freedom measures nationally and internationally and by extension a measure of democratization. Freedom House categorizes all countries of the world according to a seven-point value system with over 200 questions on the survey and multiple survey representatives in various parts of every nation. The total raw points of every country places the country in one of three categories, free, partly free, or not free. One study simultaneously examining the relationship between market economy, economic development, and political freedom found that high economic freedom increases GDP capita and a high GDP capita increases economic freedom. A high GDP capita also increases political freedom but political freedom did not increase GDP capita. There was no direct relationship either way between economic freedom and political freedom if keeping GDP capita constant. Views on democratization Francis Fukuyama wrote another classic in democratization studies entitled The End of History and the Last Man which spoke of the rise of liberal democracy as the final form of human government. However it has been argued that the expansion of liberal economic reforms has had mixed effects on democratization. In many ways, it is argued, democratic institutions have been constrained or disciplined in order to satisfy international capital markets or to facilitate the global flow of trade. Samuel P. Huntington wrote The Third Wave, partly as response to Fukuyama, 
defining a global democratization trend in the world post WWII. Huntington defined three waves of democratization that have taken place in history. The first one brought democracy to Western Europe and Northern America in the 19th century. It was followed by a rise of dictatorships during the interwar period. The second wave began after World War II, but lost steam between 1962 and the mid-1970s. The latest wave began in 1974 and is still ongoing. Democratization of Latin America and the former Eastern Bloc is part of this third wave. A very good example of a region which passed through all the three waves of democratization is the Middle East. During the 15th century it was a part of the Ottoman Empire. In the 19th century, when the empire finally collapsed. Towards the end of the First World War, the Western armies finally moved in and occupied the region. This was an act of both European expansion and state building in order to democratize the region. However, what Poseidon and Angrist argue is that, the ethnic divisions are, those that are complicating the U.S. effort to democratize Iraq. This raises interesting questions about the role of combined foreign and domestic factors in the process of democratization. In addition, Edwards said labels as Orientalist the predominantly Western perception of intrinsic incompatibility between democratic values and Islam. Moreover, he states that the Middle East and North Africa lack the prerequisites of democratization. Farid Zakariah has examined the security interests benefited from democracy promotion, pointing out the link between levels of democracy in a country and of terrorist activity. Though it is accepted that poverty in the Muslim world has been a leading contributor to the rise of terrorism, Zakariah has noted that the primary terrorists involved in the 9-11 attacks were among the upper and upper middle classes. Zakaria has suggested that the society in which al-Qaeda terrorists lived provided easy money, and therefore there existed little incentive to modernize economically or politically. With little opportunity to express themselves in the political sphere, scores of young Arab men were invited to participate through another avenue, the culture of Islamic fundamentalism. The rise of Islamic fundamentalism and its violent expression on September 11, 2001 illustrates an inherent need to express oneself politically, and a democratic government or one with democratic aspects is quite necessary to provide a forum for political expression. Larry Pardee observed that governments are motivated by political power, which is generated by two factors, legitimacy and means. The legitimacy of a democratic government is achieved through the consent of the population through fair and open elections while its financial means are derived from a healthy tax base generated by a vibrant economy. Economic success is based on a free market economy with the following elements, property rights, a fair and independent judiciary, security, and the rule of law. The core elements that support economic freedom convey the same basic rights onto individuals. Conversely, there can be no rule of law for investors when governments crack down on political opponents and no property rights for industry when personal wealth can be arbitrarily seized. A sustainable democracy has to involve far more than fair and open elections. It rests on a solid foundation of economic and political freedom that, for Western nations, had to be pried from governments over centuries. It goes back at least to 1215 when King John accepted limits on his powers and conceded certain rights in the Magna Carta. Then, as now, governments will be motivated to support rights and freedoms only when it directly impacts the government a Euro unregistered trademark's ability to maintain and exercise political power. It does not arise with idealistic notions of democracy and freedom, implied fiscal contracts with citizens exhortations from donor states or pronouncements from international agencies. Fikuma was essentially correct with his assertion regarding the end of history, that Western liberal democracy represents the end point of Mankinda Euro unregistered trademark s ideological evolution. It represents a mechanism whereby our free market system efficiently allocates resources in our economy while coexisting in a symbiotic relationship with our democratic system of government. Our governments are incentivized to protect the economy while the foundations for that economy create the conditions for democracy. Democratization in other contexts, although democratization is most often thought of in the context of national or regional politics, the term can also be applied to 
equals international bodies equals international bodies where there is an ongoing call for reform and altered voting structures and voting systems equals corporations equals the concept of democratization can also be applied in corporations where the traditional power structure was top down direction and the boss knows best this is quite different from consultation empowerment and a diffusion of decision making throughout the firm as advocated by workplace democracy movements equals the internet equals the loose anarchistic structure of the internet engineering task force and the internet itself have inspired some groups to call for more democratization of how domain names are held upheld and lost they note that the domain name system under ICANN is the least democratic and most centralized part of the internet using a simple model of first come first serve to the names of things Ralph Nader called this corporatization of the dictionary equals knowledge equals the democratization of knowledge is the spread of knowledge among common people in contrast to knowledge being controlled by elite groups equals design equals the trend that products from well-known designers are becoming cheaper and more available to masses of consumers also the trend of companies sourcing design decisions from end users see also third wave democracy chilean transition to democracy democratization in hong kong democratization in the soviet union color revolution democracy activists democracy in the middle east democratic peace theory democracy promotion good governance metapolitzy nation building nonviolent revolution portuguese transition to democracy spanish transition to democracy transitional justice transitology references further reading thomas carothers Aiding Democracy Abroad, The Learning Curve. 1999. Washington, D.C., Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. Joseph M. Colima. Strategic Transitions. 2000. Baltimore, Maryland, The Johns Hopkins University Press. Daniel Conversi. A Euro Demo Skepticism and Genocide Euro Unregistered Trademark, Political Science Review. September 2006, Vol. 4, Issue 3, pages 247 a Euro 262, Hapfer, Christian. Bernhagen, Patrick. Inglehart, Ronald and Weltzel, Christian, Democratization, Oxford, Oxford University Press, ISBN 9780199233021. Inglehart, Ronald and Weltzel, Christian, Modernization, Cultural Change and Democracy, The Human Development Sequence, New York, Cambridge University Press, ISBN 9780521846950. Frederick C. Schaffer. Democracy in Translation, Understanding Politics in an Unfamiliar Culture 1998. Ithaca, New York, Cornell University Press. Farid Zakariah. The Future of Freedom, A Liberal Democracy at Home and Abroad. 2003. New York, W. W. Norton. Christian Weltzel. Freedom Rising, Human Empowerment and the Quest for Emancipation 2013. New York, Cambridge University Press. ISBN 978-1-107-66488. Tarchu Van Hanen. Democratization, a comparative analysis of 170 countries. 2003. Routledge. ISBN 0415318602. External links, International Idea, Did the United States Create Democracy in Germany?